I've never really been into organized religion. My parents made it a point to not bring it up when my sisters and I were growing up. I had grown up so Christian and lived in the church practically every Sunday. But as I grew, I realized that I was trying to be somebody that I wasn't. Honestly, I never felt anything sitting in a house of worship. Data shows that more and more young people are leaving organized religion each year. But for a lot of Gen Z folks, there's one huge topic that's pushed them away from the church. It stands on the LGBTQ plus community. So what's going on here and where are they turning to for guidance instead? My grandmother was the one that took on that primary responsibility of teaching us all about Christianity. Charles is a grad student at Ohio University. Were there any positive lessons that you took away from Christianity growing up? Yeah, um, those common ones that you always hear, like love thy neighbor or um, less like biblical stories that would talk about giving back. I think those are lessons that like I got from the church, but you can pretty much get from anywhere and they can it can apply no matter what the source is. As I got older, I started to ask more questions about the parts of our religion that didn't necessarily make sense right off the bat to me. Um, and if there was a logical answer, then I was willing to accept it. It was those parts that couldn't necessarily be explained away or were tied to some sort of like hate or judgment towards others. That's when things started to change. For the last 1700 years, the church was such a cultural and uh, religious and legal dominant force in the lives, especially for those of us in the Western world. Lutheran Deacon Ross Murray works with GLAAD and has been a youth ministry leader for the last 24 years. And there's kind of always been this expectation that the church is the center of the town and we will all like come to it. But it's also been a place that has been exclusive. Um, it's kept out people, LGBTQ people, people of color, people with disabilities, women. And then people realize that they can sometimes get a lot of those spiritual and communal needs met um, elsewhere, and it's not worth the struggle. Even though many areas of Christianity have welcomed everyone into their pews, served as a place of refuge and revolution, and provided thousands of years of guidance and support for millions of people, Ross says that the church has had a complicated history with the queer community. From the American colonial period, where men on the Mayflower had to agree to heterosexual marriages and gender roles through a compact, to the surgical castration of children accused of being homosexual by the church as recent as the 1950s in the Netherlands, and stigma against the gay community during the HIV and AIDS epidemic of the 80s. It is really hard to give up power and privilege. Uh, and we as the church have been able to have that power and privilege for a long time. And giving that up or sharing it with other groups feels like a loss, feels like an attack. I really hate how the church made me feel about the LGBTQ community and that I had to look down on people like that. And I actually had friends who would not tell me that they were um, in that community because of fear that I would no longer want to be their friends. It started to become a very negative environment. Um, it felt like everything was a sin. It's a sin to be gay or like, you can't love who you love, and that's really harmful. My father's a pastor. I think that a lot of Gen Z hears the Bible and sees Jesus as a good role model, but then sees the church not living up to his example. I identify as bisexual. Honestly, didn't come to terms with it until very recently um, because I was struggling back and forth with, okay, this is who I am, this is how I feel, but is that me like completely going against like this thing that I've known basically since birth? In a recent survey, more than a third of Gen Z identify as non-religious. In fact, Gen Z is the least Christian generation, being most likely to identify as atheist or agnostic than any other generation. But this didn't start with Gen Z. Each generation following the silent generation has been getting less and less Christian. In 2020, over 60% of Americans identified as Christian, down from 90% 50 years ago. I think as time has gone on, people are very much less 
invested in the institution of the church. They still have a really strong sense of spirituality and wanting that form of connection, but they're often looking for that in ways that don't always mean the institutional church. We've seen a long version of using religion as not a uh, nurturing uh, thing, but actually as a weapon, right? Um, or as a way to harm others. And I think that's what people are really, really tired of. Confronted with this climate, Ross has found a way to keep young people in his community engaged with Christianity. I started thinking about how do we help young people create an identity of who they are, be comfortable with themselves, their sexual orientation, their gender identity, their faith. And I think one of the biggest things that we do, instead of lecturing or preaching or teaching at them, when we do Bible study, we read a passage, and then the rest of the morning is all questions to them about their life and their experience. And they're the ones that are do building their faith and building their spirituality. What does success look like to you? It can't be judged by numbers. Um, I think that we, we realize that, oh, my membership is this big or I have this many folks that are part of my programming. I think we're gonna have to start looking for what are the results in the real world and to, to get a little biblical, to use terms like you will know them by their fruits. And I could spend a lot of my time fighting and arguing with detractors about no, our religion has to be what it was for the last generation or the last two generations. But I also think that we are in a changing world and that Gen Z is going to make that look different. What I've come to the realization is that if I wanna have a connection with spirit, it's something that I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to seek that out on my own. I can find my own personal relationship with God or I like to call it spirit because I believe that in some way, shape or form, all religions exist. I don't really need the the structure of organized religion to have a strong relationship. So if not organized religion, what else is out there for people seeking spiritual guidance? We're gonna talk to an astrologer and psychic medium next on their perspective and the science behind them. So stay tuned.